There has never been a pitcher quite like Lynn Nolan Ryan Jr. For starters, the man often called the Ryan Express struck out 5,714 batters in his remarkable career. Let's put that into perspective. First, that's about 17% more than the number two pitcher all time, Randy Johnson. Or to put it another way, if a modern day ace like Jacob deGrom were to strike out 255 hitters in a season, as deGrom did in his last full season in 2019, it would take 22 straight campaigns to get to Nolan Ryan territory. And even then, he would still be 104 strikeouts short of Ryan's record. In other words, no one's even close. And more than likely, nobody's ever going to get close. And not only did Ryan strike out more batters than any hurler ever has, he threw more no-hitters, pitched more innings, threw more pitches, and through it all, Ryan never gave in to a hitter, never took a pitch off. Even down in the count, he was still trying to throw unhittable offerings, results be damned. He wanted to strike out every batter he ever faced and make them look bad while doing it. And with the triple digit fastball, sick curve, and fading changeup added late in his career, it wasn't very hard. Thanks to his ferocity, the typical Nolan Ryan game featured lots of strikeouts, lots of walks, and very few hits. Ryan not only struck out the most hitters ever, he walked the most, 2,795 in his career to be exact, more than 50% more than Steve Carlton, the next player on the list. The Ryan Express also threw the second most wild pitches and hit 158 batters during his career. He even walked more than 100 batters in a season 11 times, though some could argue that this lack of control only served to intimidate hitters all the more. The game has simply never seen anyone like Nolan Ryan. After he threw his record 7th no-hitter at the age of 44, Jim Reeves, a sports writer with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, remarked, Somewhere in another league where the cheering never stops and the beer is icy cold, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and Ty Cobb and, yes, Shoeless Joe too, are waiting for their starting pitcher to arrive so the game can start. Young Nolan Ryan grew up in Alvin, Texas, near Houston. He strengthened his arm as a boy the old-fashioned way, throwing newspapers. Starting at age 8, Nolan woke up early every morning to help his father deliver the Houston Post. Throwing hundreds of papers before sunrise not only bolstered his arm strength, it developed a rigorous work ethic that would never leave him. Nolan's arm became the stuff of legend in Alvin very quickly. In junior high, he could stand on the goal line of the football field and chuck a softball into the other end zone. In high school, he became a feared pitcher on the mound. And I do mean feared. In one game, he hit the lead off batter in the head, cracking his batting helmet. He then proceeded to break the next batter's arm with an offering. The guy who's due up next understandably refused to get into the batter's box at first. When he finally did, Ryan struck him out on three pitches. Ryan was still very much a work in progress and did not land on many Major League Scouts radars. The Mets took him in the 12th round of the draft in 1965 with the 295th pick. That's right, 294 players were taken before Nolan Ryan. The following year, Nolan made quick work of the Appalachian League, mowing down 313 total hitters and three minor league stops before being called up to make his major league debut at Shea Stadium in September, at the ripe old age of 19. Ryan did not get a chance to become a rotation starter for the Mets until 1968. In his first start that April, he got his first win, throwing six and two-thirds shutout innings. Ryan went just six and nine that season, but the rookie's fastball was already catching the attention of National League hitters, and some of the best at that. League MVP Orlando Cepeda observed, Nolan Ryan is the best young pitcher I've ever seen in the major leagues. In 1969, both Nolan Ryan and the Miracle Mets landed on the national front page. Ryan made his first World Series appearance, helping the improbable Mets beat the favorite Baltimore Orioles. Ryan stepped up in a pivotal Game 3, throwing two and a third scoreless innings in relief. That season would remarkably be the only World Series appearance of his entire big league career. At least it did end in a win. The following two seasons with the Mets, Ryan was a solid starter, striking out nearly a batter an inning, but still had major control problems. By the end of his 1971 campaign, Ryan, now 24, had not become the young phenom that many had anticipated. His career record, something that mattered more at the time, stood at an abysmal 29-38, and he was averaging around 6 walks per game. His ERA+, a metric used to measure how good a pitcher is relative to their peers, routinely sat around 100, or league average territory. Ryan was not happy, and was ready to give up baseball entirely rather than continue playing for the Mets. He told his wife Ruth that if New York did not trade him that offseason, he would quit entirely. So thank goodness the Mets did end up trading him to the California Angels that December along with three other players for shortstop Jim Fergosi, in what ended up being one of the most lopsided deals in big league history. Over the next few seasons in California, Ryan would reel off some of the most insane numbers a pitcher has ever compiled. It all started because the Angels, unlike the Mets, worked to help develop Ryan's potential 
Hill. Pitching coach Tom Morgan helped Ryan overhaul his delivery. With his new higher leg kick and insane stride length, Ryan felt like he was right on top of opposing hitters before he even let go of the pitch. It made his 100 mile per hour fastball look even faster than it already was. He also learned to throw his wicked curveball more consistently, helping him to keep hitters guessing. Ryan also started a weight training program that he would continue for the rest of his career. In the early 1970s, most baseball players did not lift weights, especially pitchers. Muscle mass was considered a liability, one that would kill flexibility and arm movement in pitchers. Ryan helped prove these outdated beliefs were wrong entirely. In 1972, his first year as an Angel, Ryan won 19 games and struck out a jaw-dropping 329 batters. He might have won 30 games if the Angels could have scored him some runs, something that would become a consistent theme during his time in California. Six times that season, Ryan allowed two runs or less, but lost because the Angels got shut out. I feel like I have to pitch a shot out every night or lose, the blunt Ryan told the press. If I throw one bad pitch, I'll be beaten. He was basically Jacob deGrom before Jacob deGrom. Nolan Ryan was even better in 1973, enjoying one of the most dominant seasons by a pitcher in baseball history. He won 21 games, had a 2.87 ERA, and broke Sandy Koufax's single season mark by striking out a mind-numbing 383 hitters. I'll say that again, 383 strikeouts. Somehow, he finished second in the Cy Young voting to Jim Palmer, who had a better winning percentage but more than 200 fewer strikeouts. Was Koufax-esque, at least in terms of his raw power. Ryan threw four no-hitters as an angel to tie Koufax's career record, and he had not one, not two, but five 300 strikeout seasons. He averaged more than seven innings per start. His fastball was timed at a record 100.9 miles per hour one night, which was probably an underestimate. But still, this stood as the official world record for years. On days when it was Ryan's turn to pitch, opposing hitters had a tendency to ask out of the lineup, a disease that came to be known as Ryanitis. This dominance was juxtaposed by a ton of walks, often over 150, sometimes even climbing into the 200s a season. But overall, he was universally considered baseball's most dominant pitcher. And hitters could not stop themselves from raving about Ryan's devastating stuff. Slugger Oscar Gamble said that a good game against Ryan was going over 4 and not getting hit in the head. Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson said, You don't face Ryan without your rest. He's the only guy I go against that makes me go to bed before midnight. Two-time MVP Dale Murphy said, He is the only pitcher you start thinking about two days before you face him. Dave Duncan, who would later become a successful pitching coach with the A's and Cardinals, perhaps put it best. A guy like Ryan, he said, doesn't just get you out. He embarrasses you. There are times when you feel like you've won some sort of victory by just making contact with the ball. When Ryan was on, hitters had no chance. Once, when Ryan was one out from one of his no-hitters, Detroit Tigers slugger Norm Cash walked up to the plate, not with the bat, but with a wooden table leg that had been ripped off a table in the Tiger clubhouse. Check his bat, Ryan shouted from the mound at the home plate umpire, who, after a good laugh, asked Cash to grab a real bat. Cash responded, why? I'm not going to get a hit anyway. And he didn't. Cash got a real bat, popped up, and Ryan had his no-hitter. Ryan was a workhorse as few have ever been on the mound. His pitch counts were obscene and would get a manager fired today. In a June 1974 ball game against the Red Sox, Ryan threw 13 innings with 19 strikeouts and 10 walks. He faced 58 Red Sox hitters. Today's pitchers rarely face 30 batters in a ball game. In four of his first five seasons with the Angels, Ryan threw more than 280 innings. By 1979, the 32-year-old Ryan still had good stuff. He went 16-14 and struck out 223 batters, but the Angels felt like his best years were behind him, with their GM famously remarking that Nolan Ryan can be replaced by two 8-7 and seven pitchers. Big mistake. As it turned out, Nolan Ryan was just getting warmed up. The Ryan Express wasn't even halfway done with his big league career, and many of his greatest moments were still to come, and back in his home state of Texas. After signing one of the biggest deals in the early history of free agency, Nolan Ryan fulfilled a lifelong dream by returning to pitch for his hometown Houston Astros. As an Astro, he continued to mode on hitters and surpass pitching milestones. In July 1980, he recorded his 3,000th career strikeout. The following season, he no-hit none other than the powerhouse Los Angeles Dodgers, who would later win the World Series. It was his fifth career no-hitter, breaking another Koufax record. Ryan finished the strike-shortened season of 1981 with a minuscule 1.69 ERA and a ridiculous one 95 ERA plus, the highest of his career. Then, at the start of the 1983 season, Ryan broke Walter Johnson's career strikeout record of 3,509, a number that had been on the books since 1927. 
Strikeout number 4000 came in 1985, and the Ryan Express just kept on chugging. After all, he was only 38 at the time, an age pretty old for some pitchers, but practically a spring chicken for the rough and tumble righty. In 1987, Ryan led the National League in ERA and strikeouts, but thanks to a lack of run support, went 8 and 16. He finished 5th in the Cy Young voting despite an extreme bias towards winning percentage at the time. His 142 ERA Plus also led the league and registered as the highest mark in a full season in his career. Thanks to his workout regimen, Ryan maintained a body that was stronger and fitter than most of his younger peers. He led the league in strikeouts again in 1988 as a 41-year-old. Yet Houston, like the Angels, decided he was getting too old and decided the veteran needed a pay cut. Ryan decided he needed a change of scenery and more money, and moved up the road to Arlington to join the Texas Rangers. Amazingly, the Ryan Express just kept on chugging into his mid-40s. In his first season with the Rangers, Ryan struck out a league-leading 301 hitters, the sixth time he had hit the 300 strikeout mark in his career. That August, he also posted career strikeout number 5,000. The following season in 1990, as a 43-year-old, Ryan pitched his sixth career no-hitter, beating the defending world champion Oakland A's. He did so despite constant pain in his lower back that later turned out to be a stress fracture. It wasn't all that bad, Ryan observed after the game, it only hurt when I threw the ball. That same season, Ryan returned to the mound and won his 300th game against the Brewers. Then in May 1991, the 44-year-old Ryan took the mound against Toronto, the best hitting team in the American League. In an epic performance, he shut down the Blue Jays, notching his mind-boggling seventh career no hitter, a number that will almost certainly never be equaled. Finally, the 46 year old Ryan's body started to break down, with 1993 proving to be his final campaign with the Rangers and of his 27 MLB seasons. However, Ryan still had some surprises up his sleeve, including one last intimidating moment, one that to this day still lives on as perhaps the most viral moment of his entire career. It was a hot August day in Texas, and Robin Ventura, the White Sox 26 year old All Star third baseman, strode to the plate against the then 46 year old Ryan. He had already singled against Ryan earlier. Nolan proceeded to bring the heat up and in, beating young Robin. Ventura dropped his bat, tossed his helmet, and charged the mound. Ryan proceeded to hogtie the young whippersnapper and hammered him with a volley of noogie punches to the head in what was later called the Texas haircut, a badass moment for a truly badass pitcher, encapsulating the final years of his MLB tenure succinctly, beating on much younger players, embarrassing them constantly in the process. Ryan's last career start was September 22, 1993 in Seattle. In the first inning, Ryan felt something pop. It was the ulnar collateral ligament in his right elbow. There's no way I'll ever be able to throw again, he said after the game. My body is telling me it's time to move on and do something else. Several pitchers in the history of the game have dominated their opponents as well as Nolan Ryan in his prime, but no other lasted as long as Ryan did. Thanks to his pioneering exercise regimen and truly remarkable natural gifts, Ryan sustained a 27-year career that will more than likely never be equaled. He was quiet, he was tough, and he was disciplined. He didn't smoke, didn't do anything reckless in the offseason, married his high school sweetheart, and celebrated his no-hitters with orange juice instead of champagne. And despite some erratic early seasons, Ryan rebounded to post some of the most impressive stats in the history of the major league. 5,714 career strikeouts, 5,386 innings pitched, 324 wins, and 6.6 .6 hits per nine, with some perhaps equally impressive negative numbers as well, including 2,795 walks, 4.7 walks per nine, and 277 wild pitches. Oh, yeah, and he also threw seven no-hitters, and six 300-plus strikeout seasons, all while pitching until he was nearly 50. That's why we here at MTC believe we can confidently say that there will never be another Nolan Ryan. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed the vid, and click this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great day.